All right, and we are live. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm over here testing. Okay. How about the audios? Can you hear me better over here? I think you can hear me better over here. All right. Let me pull up. Man, I need a better way to do that. Welcome, everybody, to tonight's live stream. We are continuing our work on the Zero Cross Circuit. All right. Let me pull this up, turn my volume down. There we go. All right. Welcome to my mess. <laughs> We're actually making some pretty decent progress here today. Let me do some uh, advertising uh, on uh, the Facebooks. So let everybody know we are live. Live. I should capitalize that. I should also know what I'm doing. I should really know what I'm doing. Ah, go figure. Over here, view the channel. Do, 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 share, copy link, all right, all capitals, we are live, paste, why does it always add all that extra stuff, next, post, all right, now I should be able to, yep, share, live, oh, I got three viewers, hi everybody, <laughs> sorry, I'm just doing a little live advertising, come join over, come um, join us, so, now that I have that out of the way, here's what we're doing, all right, I got some parts, and we're putting some stuff together. So here's what I got. We got a little project box. Not much of anything, but what I'm what I'm going to do is make a 110 volt supply that's just a bit safer um, than what we did last time. So what I'm going to do here is I got the project box. I have a one amp fuse because uh, I really don't see this needing any more than one amp. And then I a uh, switch, right? And I'm going to use some connectors I have. So I have these, what do they call them? What kind of connectors are these called? Hmm, 2.5 millimeter connectors. Molex plugs. It's basically the same connectors you can use for uh, your breadboards, breadboard connections. That's like this. This is a breadboard right here. Um, basically the same stuff you would use for that like I said this this circuit honestly is limited uh, the transformers rated at 300 milliamps um, so that's like 0.3 amps so we really can't do much more than that um, so all this all this wire and everything should be fine um, just trying to do a little better job so I already cut a little slit in here and I'm going to in that slit, I'm going to have oh, just a little connector. Honestly, this box is probably overkill, but I wanted a little more mass to it. And so I'm going to put this little connector in there, and then I'm going to put the fuse and the switch in here. Uh, the fuse is an oblong hole, so that that might be a little, a little iffy to get out. So I'm just going to open this here up. And the whole point, again, is to make, oh, it comes with a broken rubber gasket. That's nice. Yay, it's, it's busted. No biggie. Okay, so 
screws we'll put in the screw thingy up here. Did they short me? No, I got all four. Okay. And, all right, so I got that connector made already. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this two-piece connector. See how that's split? So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to reinsert, so I'm going to depen it and reinsert them into a single. And that will let me use uh, this side. So on this side, I'm going to use uh, the black as line. See if this will even strip this tiny wire. Oh, it did it. So I'm going to use the black as line, the white as neutral. We're going to put our fuse and our switch on the line. So at this point is when I want to throw my holes. Feel free to uh, to drop any comments, questions, you know, um, hey, get a little involvement here. Where are you guys watching from? What, uh, what area of the planet are you all from? I'm just curious. Kind of want to know. I'm just going to randomly pick a hole, a spot for the hole, right here. And just send this all the way through. And that should ta -da, be enough for this switch. Jack this down a little bit. Uh huh. All right, that goes to the off side. Put the indicator on. And then the nut. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll have enough to solder on the back of that. The, uh, the fuse, the fuse is a little deep. We may run out of, out of space for the fuse. But it should be alright. Alright, where's my... I have a wrench here. It's going to be big enough. Doo -doo -doo. Nope. It is not. want to make this nice and snug. Without being crooked, preferably. All right, this is pretty good. It's kind of an overkill switch. That should be all right. All right, next is the fuse. Ooh, I probably should not have bent that just yet. Please don't break, please don't break. Please don't break. Should not have bent that, okay. Now, the fuse, I think, is going to need, it's a bit of an oblong shape, so I may need to, I may need, need, I may need to do some fishy stuff. And like I said, the fuse is, where's the bottom? Right here. I just put the drill on it. I know what I'm doing. Ooh, it's close. It's very close. It's probably too close. Um, all right. So again, pick a hole, that should be about right. And I'm just gonna send it. Do I wanna just send it? Yes. Let me check. Yep. Just gonna send it. And I know this is not going to fit. Hmm, I may, is this one bigger? Slightly. Ooh, hopefully that didn't just 
make this a bit more sloppy. Got no comments. You guys have any? Questions or anything? Feel free to say so. Yeah. Yep, we're going to have to do some. I don't I don't have a big enough drill bit on me at the moment. So, we're going to gonna make it fit whilst making a mess because that's what you do right you gotta make messes all right well it sort of fits there we go that works yeah clean that up later probably not now I will eventually sweet now we have a fuse and uh, I'm gonna bend these back hopefully they don't break and uh, I'm trying to I think should I should I just solder this stuff in I should probably just solder this stuff in huh just solder the connections, be done with it. It's probably just as good. I was thinking about using stay cons, but I'm like, ah, I can just, we can just solder that. All right. Okay. I want to put a smaller hole in the side for the cable to go into. Let's pick this one. This one? Yep, we'll make that work. There, uh, the circuit itself is practically done. I just need to, uh... Woo! She snagged. So, the, the, yeah, the circuit itself is pretty much done. I do want to add... A couple test points to it but it should be done all right at this point um, I'm going to use hot glue to reinforce the connectors and stuff so let's go ahead and get that plugged in and running a while I uh, I figured out what was wrong with the lighting with the, the, on the last stream the lighting kept, kept glitching out and it turns out what was wrong is uh, the power strip that I had it plugged into is uh, just cheap. Pretty much what it amounts to. And um, like it wasn't making good contact in the prongs. So kind of redid how the power strips are laid out to help make that. All right, so while that's heating up, let's go ahead and depin that connector this should be small enough so these 2.5 millimeter connectors are actually pretty easy to deep in there's just a little bit of plastic it's like a little plastic finger you push the connector forward you lift this little finger up and it slides right out push it forward lift the finger up come on don't make me a liar. Isn't that what they all say? Man. I genuinely can't wait. Like this whole this this whole thing is just like this circuit is just one small step in a much larger project. And that much larger project is so creative. I genuinely can't wait. Till that all starts coming together. Ta-da! Now it's repinned. Now it's in a single connector, so it's just a little bit more robust that way. Is That's the idea. So I'm going to push that up from the bottom. Right like that. 
It doesn't have to stick out too far. So I'm using, again, for safety sakes, I'm using the female side on the connector. That way, uh, there's no way you can like turn it on and then, you know, get you. Um, that's the idea of that. All right, so if I'm going to do this with solder, do I have my heat shrink over here? Uh, am I gonna need my heat shrink? Wait. I put the circuit right down in front of the microphone. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Okay. I do need my heat shrink. I think it's over there. Wait. Do I have some over here? Do I have some heat shrink over here? Nope. All right. Pardon me a second. Ooh, that would have been a better connector to use. Oh, I don't have it. Pardon me a second. Well, I grab a piece of heat shrink. Here we go. Box O heat shrink. Ta-da! All right, got some heat shrink. Because if we're going to do this, might as well do it right, sort of. All right, let's see. This is going to be slightly wonky. Make sure, yep, all right, the striped. So I said this on the last stream, little tip is that on the American two prong polarized plugs, polarized being it only goes in one direction. You'll notice that one plug is fat, the other plug is skinny, the fat one is neutral. That is standard operation. Are we getting hot? Yep, we're starting to get hot, okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start stripping right there, and I probably won't heat shrink the line sides because they'll be held in place with, uh, I don't really want to bottle that up too much. All right. I'm going to go ahead and slide that through. And I'm going to put the bigger tip for this experience. I'm going to put the bigger tip on the soldering iron. Ducky, go through the hole. And I am going to need... Nice. I am definitely going to need... Okay. All right, that's about ready. Let's go ahead and bob some in there just to get that stuck. And glob some in there to hold that in place. Good. Get that. Hot 
glues. Hot glue is very useful. All right, so what I've done whoop, is touched wet hot glue. Wet. Is hot glue really wet? Yes, it's hot. So I'm just letting the hot glue uh, go for a minute, and I need to get my flux. Ooh, this stuff is this stuff is taking a minute, taking its time. All right, flux, and the bigger tip. Oh yeah, I wanted to put. Um, Look at it. I want to change tips, right? I want a bigger tip for the soldering iron. It's literally just that easy. Slide in, slide out, done. <coughs> Excuse me. There is there is a set screw that you can use to make sure the tips don't fall out. Obviously, I don't have that tight. Okay. We're starting to get there. Uh, yes, I wanted to reinforce this with hot glue as well. Because this is a little, wee little bit shaky. That is probably almost it for the hot glue. I'll reinforce this. Whoa. Sure wish you would cool down. Without being fucking strung the wrong way. Can't he lever the wrong way? Okay, I need to take the flux, I need to put some flux on there, on these fittings. This needs, I'm hoping I can get away with something like this for the heat shrink on that. Yeah, how about this, does this slide inside? No, it does not. I'm thinking about building up. Sometimes you can build up the heat shrink uh, so that it's not as quite as much when you have like a larger gap to bridge. Sometimes you can build it up. Yeah, that works. Okay. This over here. That's a bit on the long side, so I'm going to trim it up a little bit more. What the heck is that? Why is it blue? What the... Alright, so I'm wondering... What are you asking is blue? I mean this this is heat shrink. The this blue stuff, this is heat shrink. Hi Brian. Um yeah, so the blue stuff is heat shrink. It's some cheesy box from Amazon, right? So they put colors and stuff to it cuz you know everything's got to be color coded or something like that. Okay. Do do do. All right, that's better. And I can take this over here. We can start putting some some flux in a situation like this. Having flux on here is a good thing, even though the solder does have flux in it. Uh, these these connectors probably are not designed to be soldered on. 
if I'm being honest. Okay, now I need some wire, and I'm going to pick some slightly better wire to make the bridge crossed. Yep, here we have some used. Here we have some used wire. This is wide side, so I'll just use black. This should do the job nicely. Unless you're asking about the, the mat. If you're asking about the mat, the mat is blue uh, because it's this is a silicone build mat. And uh, that just has to do with the fact that um, it keeps your workbench from getting, you know, burned or damaged or whatever. That's all that is. Okay. Got some, some wire. We're going to pull this up and over. This wire is actually overkill because we're only, again, we're only dealing with 300 milliamps max. The fuse, the circuit breaker, is one amp. So uh, this this wire that I just used, that's overkill. The, the, the jumper wire that I'm using, which is this tiny little stuff, uh, that's fine. Because again, 300 milliamps. So it'll be fine. All right, now that I'm done using my tweezers as a tool that you're not supposed to, because, you know, whatever. All right, one of the things, oh no, I brought out my helping hands and it's missing a hand. There it is. I'm like, I know I saw this thing over here. Now, I'm going to use my helping hands here to hold the wire itself. All right. Especially if I can get it close enough. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of lame. All right. Okie dokie. Now Get some flux on that. That is very much plenty of flux. So again, if you guys want to comment, you know, I'm interested. Uh, any questions? Where are you guys from? What are you interested in? Uh, again, we're building this zero cross detection circuit. Well, this right now, what we're building is actually uh, a 110 volt, like a safer 110 volt supply. Four. Uh oh. Where's my power? All right, I can unplug this. I'm missing power to my soldering iron. There we go. All right. Love this soldering iron. No. Uh oh. Ta da. 
I guess it's temperamental every now and then. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. All right, we got our solder. This is actually pretty little, kind of small for the solder, but it'll be all right. And we are ready to send it. Whew, I lost all my viewers. Love it. Okay, get a little bit of heat action going on here. Stop sticking your tongue out because it's weird. All right. That's it for that. Okay, get a little more. This is going nice and quickly. Perfect. Now I'm just going to take this off and this off. Move this out of the way so that I can get to this. Yeah, that one's being a little more difficult. A lot more difficult, you could say. All right. We're still at 320. Oh, this wire is something else. All right. Get some more solder in on there. Ta da Okay. <coughs> fume extractor. I still haven't set up the fume extractor. Okay. That's soldered. That looks good. That's soldered. That's soldered. That is soldered. Yes. All right. I think we're good. Go ahead and clean the tip off. Ouch. Try not to stab yourself in the finger with a super hot tip. All right, now this gets the heat shrink.
Okay, and this is why I actually keep around uh, the butane soldering iron because it makes a really nice hot air gun. It does. Perfect for this heat shrinking operation. See that? Gotta love it. Ooh. Don't love that. A little piece of it went through. That heat shrink did not work out well, and I do not like how that is right there. Okay. As long as I keep that shorter, that should be fine. Oh, excuse me. All right, now we're going to plug the uh, hot glue gun back in. Remember, that's unplugged. And I'm plugging the hot glue gun. All right. I'm plugging the hot glue gun back in because I want to reinforce this joint right here. And then I'm going to button it up. And that should take care of our power supply. Ooh, as the heartburn rolls. <coughs> Excuse me for a second. Whoop, whoop. I put these, um, I put these giant four inch rollers on the office chair. Now the thing rolls nice. Yes, sir, re Bob. Oh. I'm doing I'm doing that because I don't want it to go anywhere. Yes. Alright, it looks a little messy in there, but it's not too bad. I think by the time I put the cap on... So we've got line voltage coming in. So this is line. Just cleaning off my tweezers a little bit. So this is line voltage right here. Goes through the switch. Jumps over, goes through the, fu the circuit breaker. Sorry, I keep calling it a fuse goes through the circuit breaker and into our connector there. I'm doing I'm doing this because I don't want this piece to move inside to float around like that. You know what? I probably Throw some in there too, just to just to give that switch a little reinforcement. All right, is that good? That's good. All right, all right, cool. Pretty basic stuff, uh, but this will let me plug in safely. <laughs> plug in my 110 volt to the wall outlet. Have a fused, and it's only one amp, so a small fused power supply. In order to run the circuit, now we can put the back on, right? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. This way it doesn't look so bloody janky when I go to test the circuit out. Because the circuit is, you know, it's based on uh, line voltage. So, put this in. Genuinely would love to know what everybody's up to tonight. If anybody's got any 
dad jokes or anything else like that. Does that tell me the time? It does not. It does tell me that I can't hold on to a screwdriver. It does tell me that my tablet is not going to last very long. That's okay. I don't want this I don't want tonight's stream to be excessively long. I really want to really get into actually testing this circuit out. So once I have this buttoned up, there's only one more thing I want to do. And that's make the uh, the actual power connector. All right, there we go. It's like I said, super basic. We have a switch, a fuse, or sorry, jeez, I keep calling it a fuse. It's a circuit breaker. So a switch, a circuit breaker, and then this is a tiny little port because it's convenient. These are the jumpers I use, so that's why I did this. It's convenient. Now I'm going to set this to the side. You will see it again. Uh, but I'm setting it to the side for now. And uh, a buddy of mine asked me, he's like, hey, is that uh, is that UL listed? <laughs> right. Sure. Sure it is. All right, so now I'm going to depen these connectors and add the more uh, sturdy two connectors here. This really doesn't take much. Just get in there, lift the plastic. and send it. These 2.5 millimeter uh, connectors are actually very handy. All right. Uh, nope, I'm doing it backwards. Do it this direction. Oh, try to actually make it in the hole, huh? How about that? Good idea, it seems. All right, see? So that's a little bit more of a robust connection there. So this is the male end. This will plug in to my power box. And then this end, again, I'm just going to depin this just to make it a little more sturdy. This end will be the jumper that goes to the actual circuit. And if you stick around, if you guys stick around, I will show on the oscilloscope we're going to use the oscilloscope live uh, to look at this circuit. And uh, I was I was experimenting the other day to make sure I could pull the oscilloscope into the stream. And I can, and it's awesome, and it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be cool. Okay, so now I have my power jumper, so I got my box. And then this plugs in. Right to here. Uh oh. There we go. Just a bit tight. We like it tight. And then this plugs in right on the circuit. Beautiful. That's exactly what we wanted. Now there's two pins I want to solder on to this yet for testing purposes. Uh, so we're going to switch up the solder tips again. Again, just that easy. T, what is this again? TS-101. Love this thing a lot. I need to plug that power back in. Right. And I'm just going to add... Uh, a couple pins to this circuit for testing purposes so that I can clamp onto the signals and um, we shall get going okay this goes right here Not exactly great at this. This should go right here. Right? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Oh, of course it fell out. That's the worst part about these things. There's nothing holding them in. So you kind of got to 
finagle it a bit and be delicate with it. Okay. I do love how fast this soldering iron heats up. I really do. Heating. Three twenty. All right, we got the solder. Get a little tip tenner, and we're gonna get this done. Ah, oh, viewership. I'm surprised people don't want to. Magnet. Didn't know that was there. Hopefully this video is actually worth something. The video I'll be able to, uh, if I recorded it, this video I'll be able to um, cut apart because the the oscilloscope portion of this is is going to be at least I think it's going to be interesting. Not very often do you see people actually using the oscilloscope. Well, you know what? I should stand corrected. It's not very often you see average people using oscilloscopes. You see the professionals do it all the time because they're professionals. Imagine that. Come on. There we go. That's a bit cold. That's better. All right. There is my test pen. Cool. So what I've just done is added test pens that I can grab with the oscilloscope and uh, make this work. Okay, so at this point, let everything's ready. Everything's ready to test. So let's just go over this. Let's just do a little review and go over this circuit. In fact, if you'll bear with me a minute, I'm going to make sure this is recording. Now that we're recording, <laughs> so that I can use this footage for future purposes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's that that's I'll make that work. Okay, so let's review the circuit. Don't need this solder anymore. I don't need the tip tinner. I don't need the solder or the other thing. I believe I have more leads I can use. All right. So, Reviewing the circuit. Here's what we got going on. I have a transformer. So we have an input right here. Where's my pointer? So we have an input right here. This takes 110 volts. So we got 110 volts right here. That goes to this transformer. Excuse me. The transformer takes the 110 volts and brings it down to 8 volts. You'll notice on the outputs of the transformer, it's 16 volts or... 8 volts at 0.3 amps. Now, what that means, you'll see there's four pins on the output of the transformer. They let you do either series in 16 or parallel in 8. Obviously, the series is less amps, parallel is more amps, and we wanted the lower voltage anyways. So, from the transformer, then we go to a rectifier assembly. So, the rectifier assembly turns the sine wave into a, you know, a sine wave, something that goes positive, negative, positive, negative in a little roller coaster pattern. And so the, the rectifier takes it from the roller coaster pattern to, it's just a DC roller coaster pattern. It flips the negative side to the top. So you end up with twice as many top side pulses, twice as many positive side pulses. That is about as technical as a fart in a spacesuit, but that's what we're going with. So from there, we have we split in two directions from there. This circuit right on the back, I have two 51,000 ohm resistors uh, that do a voltage drop from the 11-ish volts 
this is peak voltage. The 11 ish volts of the DC bus. Um, yes. So that goes the 11 ish volts of the DC bus down to uh, 5 ish volts. So we have a 5 volt. Again, it's still pulsed. Uh, so you still see the same sine wave. It's not a sine wave. It's a rectified. Anyway, you still see the same pulsing action, uh, but it, that leads into the comparator, right, on the positive side of the comparator. Then we come up here. We go back to a resistor. So this resistor right here, and then this diode. So we go to the resistor to the diode, and then we have a capacitor and Zener diode combination that should result in... Uh, a very steady 5 volts reference for the most part. And that 5 volts reference then is feeding into this here uh, re uh, potentiometer. The potentiometer is taking that 5 volt reference and sending an adjustable reference voltage to the negative side of the comparator. And the way the comparator works is you have two inputs. When the negative side is higher than the positive side, it turns off. And when the positive side's higher than the negative side, it turns on. Um, realistically, what it's doing is it's switching from, from the positive input to the negative input. So it's like, it's really, it's really like a relay, honestly. Um, you know, a, a, a double pull, no, double throw relay. We have a normally open and a normally closed. So, by giving the if we have a, a voltage that's going up and down, like a roller coaster, and we give it a reference voltage that's adjustable, we can decide at what point, uh, using that reference voltage, we can decide at what point uh, the comparator turns on on that sine wave. That's the whole idea. So then that comes over here, switches the opto isolator, the opto isolator then that is designed. In this case, I put in some jumpers to use the 5 volt bus um, because we're using an oscilloscope, so it's all one, uh, just one thing. Uh, but in this case, the point of the opto isolator is to be able to attach a computer so that what we're doing is giving the computer a zero cross reference relative to how we adjust it. So we can adjust this so that the zero cross leads the computer. That's the circuit. That's what we're going to test with the oscilloscope. Let's start setting that up. Okay, I need these leads on the oscilloscope because I'm going to need at least three traces and a ground. And this is going to take a little bit of, this is going to take me a little bit of time, not going to lie. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this to the ground pin right there. All right. That is my ground. That is my reference. Actually, I probably could put that on uh, the neutral side. It doesn't need to be. So because I'm using a battery-powered oscilloscope, uh, here we go, this is what I was looking for. Because I'm using a battery-powered oscilloscope, I don't have to worry about shorting things out. Ah, this is what I needed. My leads are not going to be color-coded like would be nice, but it should work anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch one of my camera inputs on the stream. Um, oh, shenanigans. I need to. Hey, Tom. Hey, Alex. Was having some technical issues watching and chatting. Got got 85 figured out. What was 85? <laughs> um, okay. I am going to switch the camera angles around a little bit when I get ready to do this uh, because all right now I have three inputs I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oscilloscope on actually Tom I'm glad you're here you may 
recognize this oscilloscope. I've been trying to use the oscilloscopes more for auto diag. You know, yeah, actually, interestingly enough, you may recognize the oscilloscope that we're using here because it's a snap-on, it's a snap-on Varus four-channel oscilloscope. Turns out they actually work very well for many things. All right, so this is booting up. That's going to take a little bit to boot up. I am going to go to the computer now. Maybe I'll take the camera with me. I'm going to go to the computer now, and I'm going to start switching up the camera angles so that we can pull in the oscilloscope right into the screen. So let me do that. It not 85, rough day, kind of brain dead. Yeah. Was it, uh, was it one of those Mondays? All right, sorry for the camera shake. I know this is weird. Okay. Now, what I need to do is I need to pull in OBS. So I'm going to open OBS. Run as administrator. Yes. And, ah, yep. So we have the Varus. I'm going to start the virtual cam. I'm going to pull that down. And then what I'm going to do is, should I do this half camera? I'm wondering if I should do this on a half camera angle. So I can, oh wait, I think I got the wrong one. Webcam, capture, that's the OBS, collab cam, bench cam. All right, so if I pull this over, it's going to compress that. All right. Now, now I want to bring this one in. All right, cool. Close. Ta-da! Check that out. And I'm going to bring that over. And it hides, <laughs> it hides my face anyways. All right. Um, if you guys are cool without having my face, this is what we're going to work with. Yes. Okay. So I'm still here. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. But we are going to start using the lab scope. And uh, I'm probably going to have to walk through the entire setup on the lab scope to get this correct. But that is okay. That is what we're here for. Okay. Now, setup. Traces. I want trace 3 to be visible, displayed. Yes. And... I don't need 400 volts, so this can be uh, probably 1 volt. Yes, back. And it's DC, we're okay with that. Back, now I'm going to set the rest of them up for the same. That's okay. Displayed. And... One volt. Back. One volt displayed. Okay. Back. <clears throat> Not sure why I'm getting... <clears throat> now, I'm probably going to have to adjust the time scale. And I might have to adjust... Yeah. We'll see how that... We'll see how that falls out. But I might have to adjust the time scale as we go along. But now, now we're going to start powering this thing up. So let me get my power supply that I just made and lost because I'm a mess. Woo, this is exciting. Plugging in the power supply to our power strip over here. All right. 
connecting our jumper cables. Oh goodness gracious. When I when I find the jumper cables, we're gonna connect the jumper cables in. Oh man, am I a mess. I am a terrible mess. I'm gonna have so much editing edit, editing to do on the footage. Cool. Was using work snap on Triton D10 and my hand tech today to die and confirm a Lin bus issue and a Honda. Fantastic work, my guy. I was actually doing something very similar today, Tom. So I had a, uh, you may be aware that I moved into the HVAC realm. Oh my, what did I do? Oh, they're on the floor. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not on camera. That was embarrassing. Um, I was actually doing something very similar today. So, as you may know, I am uh, HVAC now. And uh, today I had an entire building network, uh, HVAC building management network, and that is a CAN bus. So not a LIN bus, a CAN bus. So two-wire uh, control area network. And uh, that was uh, shorting out. Half the entire building was down. And uh, so I was using an oscilloscope to, uh, to work on that. So we were both doing some similar stuff. All right. I'm plugging that in. And let's see. Trace one is right here. So trace one should be the positive. I want to make sure I'm not shorting anything out here. Maybe I should come in from this angle. All right, trace one positive. Trace two is the other red. That should be, I am crossing my finger something fierce that this actually works. I really am. Trace two. This should be our voltage reference that I'm gonna have a hard time clipping onto here. All right, and then the last one should be our trigger. Whew. Man, somehow I feel like I just, this is nervous, I'm very nervous. Because somehow I feel like I'm, I've something's messed up. Ready or not, fucking cross your fingers, cross your fingers, cross your toes. Uh-oh, we got something. It didn't blow up. All right, first of all, it didn't blow up. So, when? Now, let me take all my traces. Yep, looks like I'm going to need to do some setup. Uh, pardon, while I reset the traces, let's take it to 2 volts. Back. Trace two, two volts back. Trace three, two volts back. All right. Now pull all of them down to zero. Okay, I'm noticing something interesting. My trace, oh, it's, I gotcha. My traces are not setting up the way I thought they would. Forgive me, I'm still, still getting this tuned in. Let's take this to 10 volts. Back. And we should soon start seeing something on the screen here. All right, there we go. Holy shit, guys. 
Holy shit. Okay, I'm noticing one thing, and that's that my trigger is, uh, whilst my trigger is definitely doing what it's supposed to. All right, I need to, um, I need to adjust my trigger. I forget how to adjust the trigger. Wait for it. Let me go to setup, trigger, um, trace one. That should be fine. Uh, let's go with. All right, done. <laughs> my guys, my guys. It's working. It's totally working. All right. Moment of truth. All right. So if you look on the blue line, uh, so the yellow, the yellow is the, uh, the line voltage that I was talking about. My near five volts. Guys, this is, this is fucking exciting. Um, so the yellow, the fact that this is pretty much matching up with, uh, the circuit simulator like, it is dirty. We do have some dirt in the system. Um, but the fact that this is pretty much matching up with what the circuit simulator was saying would happen, I am super excited with this. Super excited. So, the yellow line is our is our line voltage reference. That's what it looks like when you rectify a uh, the voltage out of an outlet, right? So that's a rectified sine wave, right? So that's our reference. I keep staring at a camera like one's there. Okay, our green line is our uh, our negative voltage reference. Remember, I have the comparator. One side is our line voltage reference. The other side is our negative is our our steady voltage reference. So I can change that with this. Look. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So you'll notice the green line is our voltage reference. It looks like I have some capacitive losses going on here, but I turn this way down. Now, when I turn this down, please pay attention to the blue line. In fact, let me take the blue line up. Trace three, I'm going to bring to the top. Uh, if you notice the blips on the blue line, which is trace three, they match the, <laughs> they match where the green line crosses the yellow. That's exactly what is supposed to happen. The blips on the blue line match the, in fact, I think, let trace three, I think I can amplify that. Traces... Trace three, if I bring that to five volts, two volts. Oh, two volts is too much. Sorry, sorry. Trace three, five volts. Um, it's a little better. You can see it a little better. All right. So you see the blips on the blue line. Uh, the blips on the blue line match where the green line crosses over the yellow line. And that is exactly what I was aiming for. So if I take this potentiometer and I raise the input voltage on the negative side of the comparator, you'll see the green line goes up and that blue line the blips get bigger. Oh, all right. One of the reasons that this is the you see the blue line kind of glitching out that way is because I'm I'm stealing voltage from my uh, I'm stealing voltage from the DC bus and it wasn't really meant for that. Um, but yeah, you can see this. The blips on the blue line match where the green line crosses over. What does this mean? This is a raging success. This is success. We fucking win. I got to celebrate this shit. This is awesome. What does this mean though? If you look where the yellow line hits zero right at the bottom of the screen, right? 
I need to tell, the whole point of this circuit is to tell a computer when that yellow line hits zero. The computer needs to know that, right? Well, my blue line, you can see, is spanning that zero mark. But it's spanning the zero mark in a way that allows me to lead the computer by at least a couple milliseconds. Hold on. Let me put... Um, Let's see if I can let's see if I can set up the cursor. Okay, I'm going to set up the cursor. Oop. Back. Okay. So I'm going to set the cursor as close as I can to the switch moment. All right? And then I'm going to set number two cursor as close as I can to zero moment. And I should be able to see a time differential, which is 1.32 milliseconds. I want to get a bit more than that, <clears throat> but this is beautiful. This allows me to lead. So right now, I can tell the computer... 1.32 right now it would be telling the computer 1.32 milliseconds ahead of when the the yellow line hits zero and that's important because every single component in a circuit requires time to operate including the computer um, so I found that I need as much as two milliseconds which this will be able to give me I need as much as two milliseconds uh, warning to get the by the time it goes hey start switching by the time the computer sees that signal and then thinks about turning on and then actually does the turning on function is roughly two milliseconds this gives me the ability to dial that in this whole thing is a raging success I am super fucking stoked super stoked and frankly the fact that I was just able to bring all this onto the live stream. Fucking phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, come on, look at this. This is like, <laughs> this is like decent level project work, guys. This has gone from idea to simulation to prototyping to actually effing working. Super stoked. I am super stoked. All right, I'm going to turn the oscilloscope off for a minute. I'm going to bench cam, fit screen, transform. There we go. All right. Let me get in the camera. All right, guys. Um, I am super stoked about this. Uh, we've only been on for an hour and 13 minutes. That's like 13 minutes more than I was going to be on. Uh, <laughs> but this thing works. It works exactly as, as it was designed to work. And uh, I cannot tell you how excited I am about that. Now, I'm going to shape up this component to just trim off some of the access stuff and uh, make it fit a little better. But this component is done. We succeeded. We made a zero cross detection circuit that is adjustable. I am now going to start working on a driver circuit that will drive the uh, the hot plate. So I'm, I'm kind of making a chemistry set, a homemade chemistry set. And it's for a reason. It's the next step in this entire project. Is uh, I'm actually going to be distilling hydrogen peroxide and you know, making it more concentrated. So I guess not distilling, concentrating hydrogen peroxide. Um, that's the end goal. So now I'm gonna now that this circuit works, I'm going to start building a driver to power the hot plate in a manner that I can set a temperature, have a reading like a little screen that reads out my, you know, set the temp the the setting and the uh, actual temperature. And the power or like the percentage used right so there'll be a little screen on there I'll show you let me show you 
I am so excited. Dude, this is this is phenomenal. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. You're good. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy. Alright. This thing. Ah. So this this is the hot plate off a commercial bun coffee maker. It's really basic. It's just a it's just a heat strip in there. But what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to add a screen, an L C D screen, and a knob to, and then a switch, a power switch, obviously, to turn this, and I'm gonna add a, uh, somewhere in here, I'm gonna add a temperature sensor. I'm going to turn this hot plate into a computer controlled, essentially electric Bunsen burner that I can set the temperature to. And, and then the controller will maintain that temperature no matter what happens. So it'll raise and lower the amperage uh, based on the temperature for this. That's what's happening now. That's what we're doing. Now that this circuit works, I'm going to build the driver to make this. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so stoked. I really am. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to end the, uh, I'm going to end the live stream here. We have a hundred percent accomplished what we set out to accomplish. And, uh, the next step is making the driver for, for the, the hot plate. Um, that is a bit more straightforward, slightly less experimental. I already am familiar with the components. There's a little more, it'll be an Arduino involved, uh, as well as an 80 tiny 85. Um, there's a little bit more computery stuff to it, um, but it should all work out. I'm hoping I can take, actually take this video and turn it, like I've been recording this, so I'm hoping I can take this material and, and edit it out to be, uh, you know, to be a video, um, and then I can put a video out. So this is this is exciting stuff for me. Thank you very much, everybody that actually watched through. Uh, I appreciate it, Tom. You're like a super consistent viewer. I really appreciate that. You have no idea. Um, let me know if you want to. I haven't forgot about your voltage uh, regulator idea. If you want me to build one like and show you <clears throat> or if you want to try and figure it out honestly it's not too difficult i think you can totally figure it out you only need one nine volt battery you can put two if you want extra capacity but you really only need nine volts um and that uh, that that regulator that i sent you the link i sent you uh will get that done in fact it actually gives you the circuit diagram you need to put the capacitors in the right place to support it no biggie um, but anyways, yes, next one, next video is going to be about building the Bunsen burner, the electric Bunsen burner. And uh, then the video after that, once we build the electric Bunsen burner, then it's going to be making a chemistry set. Oh, man, I'm excited about this stuff. So anyways, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see you in the next one.